box. But let's get into what we do every Wednesday, and it's our underreaction. Listen, we've beaten all the big storylines to death, so it's time for a few things that we aren't talking about enough. And I'm going to start where the Super Bowl is going to be in just a couple of months with the Cardinals, because this Arizona team is something else. I think we are underreacting to what Colt McCoy's performance on Sunday means for this Cardinal squad. They beat the Rams, and I know Matthew Stafford didn't play, but Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey did, and the Cardinals' offense looked as functional as it has all year. They looked good. So, listen, it wasn't the most spectacular or explosive performance, but the Cardinals put up 27 points and moved the ball consistently up and down the field. At four and six now, four and six with the season hanging in the balance, the cards have to consider, I think, and I, I'm not hearing this enough, and I'm sure Alex Clancy's talking about this, and he'd love to come on and chop it up, and maybe we'll have him on. I don't hear enough about starting Colts again. And we're talking four and six here, so we're talking about a critical Monday night bright lights matchup against the Niners as part of the international series. They're playing the sucker in Mexico City. Whatever happens with Colts, and if whether or not they have a conversation internally, if he should be out there or Murray or whatever, there is a bigger issue at play here because this offseason, Arizona locked up Steve Keim, their longtime GM, head coach Kiff Cliff Kingsbury, and Kyler Murray, right? They did this whole thing, and then there's the dog. I don't know if the dog has to do with it, but I think he might be guilty too. Here's the thing. It's a valid question. And by the way, they're locked up through 2027, people. It's simple. Do they get along? Are they friends? Is there dysfunction? Is Taylor Swift not writing some song about this bromance uh, out in the desert? I mean, come on. It seems like there is some sort of disconnect between the three. And I can take it back to the collapses down the stretch the last few seasons, that's, that's the effort, that's soullessness, that's something going on. There's drama surrounding the, uh, what were they calling it, the independent study clause with Kyler Murray in his contract that was then removed. That was a huge talk of the offseason. And then there's this miserable start to this year when there's so much talent, it doesn't add up. And I know a toxic relationship when I see one, people. I'm not in that locker room, so I can't point to which one it is or if it's even one of them, if it's two of them, if it's the other. But it's obvious that there's something going on and something needs to change. And if Colt McCoy keeps playing the way he's playing and succeeding, it's only going to shine a brighter spotlight on whatever the disconnect seems to be between Cliff and Kyler. So something has to give. Listen, Three's Company... Rest in peace, Jack Ritter, Suzanne Summer. Great sitcom in the 80s, but this is not that. Who's it going to be? What are your thoughts at Up and Adam Show? You want them to be good. You want them to be successful. We show this montage on our, on our show of the winning teams in the locker rooms, and you're seeing Dayball winning, and you're seeing the Vikings and Kirk Cousins. And, all that. and then they show Cliff, and he's winning after the game with Colt McCoy with the Rams, and I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. Uh... All right, we're going to have some great beat reporters on the show to talk about some of these storylines. I do want to know what else we're underreacting to. And we have to hit the lights on a player, a performance, or something by the end of the show that deserves some love. I put on Twitter CJ Ham, the fullback for the Vikings. I think it's been like five years since he's had a touchdown, a great fullback. And, uh, and I got a lot of love for that on Twitter, which you love to see. So if you have anybody, hit me up, definitely. Um, okay, so let's go to another thing that I think we're underreacting to. And I want to go to a team that I always hear from their fans about we don't talk about them and we don't. And this year I'm somehow not. I'm talking about the Titans. And I do think we are underreacting to the Titans. And I want to hear from those fans because they keep winning despite having the weakest offensive output of any team in the league right now. And that, my friends, is hard to do. Look at what I mean. Look at these numbers. Hamilton put this together, and he'll be joining me in a second to give his thoughts here. The Titans rank dead last offensively right now. Dead last, yet somehow they're atop the AFC South. You can talk about the division being what it is, but they're, they've won six games. Winning six games is not easy, and they've done it by a significant margin. So if you put the context together here, they are on track, get this, to join the 1989 Steelers. Another Taylor Swift reference there. Couldn't get tickets. Tried buying tickets for Taylor Swift for like seven hours last night for my niece Maya. Um, so if anybody has any ins, let me know. But 1989, of course, the Taylor Swift album, but also the last time the Steel that this happened, the they're the only other team, those 1989 Steelers, since the merger to make the playoffs while finishing last in total offense. It's impressive, people. It doesn't happen very often. So they would be the first to ever do so and win a division title, which is a little 
mind-blowing emoji. And I do think we have to give credit to Mike Vrabel. That's the guy. He is the reigning coach of the year, lest you forget. But I think what he's doing right now is even more impressive than last year. Taylor Luan is out. No Harold Landry. They lost Tannehill for a few games. They deal away A.J. Brown. Who knows what Vrabel even have to do with that. But this guy, in these stupid shorts in the cold weather, is still finding a way. And don't let this tough guy I wear shorts when it's cold act, uh, you know, or the talk of cutting off appendages. Yeah, that's I'm bringing that back to 2022. Don't let that fool you. This guy, that man out there that needs to go to Dick's Sporting Goods and get some the North Face police pants or something, <laughs> he is doing this without, I mentioned Harold Landry. That's, that's his best pass rusher. And somehow he has schemed up an absurd 77 quarterback pressures out of his defense over the last two weeks. That is almost double the next closest team. How do you do that? How does that happen? I bet you LaShawn McCoy thinks he's a better coach than Bill Belichick, and he is finding ways to get just enough out of his offense. He's dialing up plays. I mean, remember this? Can we bring this up? Dial this up. The flea flicker, guys. Oh, come on. Come on. And it's the perfect time he's doing this. Down three to Denver. Come on. At some point, they need to get this offense going if they're going to contend in this conference, of course. The AFC's loaded. But you got to give Ray Bullis. And Titans fans, I'm annoyed with you. Where have you been? Why aren't you bothering me for not talking? Why aren't you bothering everybody for not giving you any love? You are atop your division. You are finding ways to win regardless. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to whip this. I'm literally going to cut this pony off like I'm going to cut Conrad's hair off. This is outrageous. Okay. We now also, what else are we underreacting to? If I don't have tweets, and I'm going to look right now. Oh, see, that would be cute. I want to look at tweets really quick. Are people tweeting anything that we're underreacting to? I know Taylor Few is all over it. I don't think I have internet in here. I gotta get hooked. Oh, yeah, we'll get hooked up to that. Lots of Shams love on the old Twitter feed. Lots of cut Conrad's hair. But what are we underreacting to and not beating dead? And all we were talking about, of course, is the Packers and you know the quarterback play and Tom Brady turning it around. Um, I'm gonna go a little. I don't know. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna go negative here. I just think it's fascinating what the national media collectively decides to spend time on and what they don't decide to spend time on. And whether it's by market, whether it's by big city, whether it's by pedigree or just general punching bag worthiness, I don't know. But I do believe that we collectively are underreacting to how bad the Rams have been this season. And there's a lot of people out there that think that I hate the Rams. And it's not true. But now we have news that Cooper Cup's ankle injury, uh, you know, he's on IR and LA is well on their way to joining this list. Take a look at this, guys. And while, yeah, it's not totally unheard of for Super Bowl champs to miss the playoffs the next year, it's a little insane to have it happen and barely be a blip on the radar. For some reason, we are not talking about the Rams. I don't understand. I'm gonna stop it right there. I mean, I'm obviously a supporter of the Bengals. We are going to talk about the Bengals with uh, an intrepid beat reporter close to the team there as they come off their bye. But the Bengals started this season slow. They reshuffled an offensive line. Uh, and everyone's like, the Bengals aren't going anywhere. They're not, look at how bad they are. And there's people piling on the Cincinnati squad. The Cincinnati squad that had a great run last year and lost the Super Bowl. What about the team that talked so much and then went to the Super Bowl and won it and what they're not doing to start this year? And yes, Eric Weddle will be here tomorrow. We'll have to talk all about this because Matthew Stafford's arm, I said this before the season started, and now it just hasn't looked right. And it hasn't looked right since that elbow surgery. And then, of course, he's dealing with his own issues. Now, um, I think we're going to keep going here. The O-line, no Andrew Whitworth. He's out there doing his thing for Amazon Prime. I can't even imagine. I have no knowledge of this, but there's got to be conversations happening about him coming back because the run game does not exist. None of the receivers other than Cup have performed, and there's just no juice to this team at all. So I think we are seeing the toll that the F them picks, F them picks approach can take on a squad. Listen, they have no depth and they haven't been able to replace the players who've declined or moved on because they've had no draft capital. Yes, it got the Rams and the Lombardi and they did all these things to get these wins. But, and I understand that you take that trade off. Would you trade off your future and contending every year for that championship? I get it. Uh, but remember, they were a Jaquaski Tart drop interception away from 
absolutely being left totally empty handed. So if you look at the Chiefs as a contrast, and I was talking to Hamilton, I'll bring Hamilton here in a minute. Uh, you know, the Chiefs have a ring. They have two conference championships. They made a consecutive AFC title game by taking a long-term approach. That's what they did. They traded away a top player in his prime, Tyreek Hill. They traded away Tyreek Hill, why? To help rebuild and bolster and add depth to the rest of the roster. Look who they've added through the draft in the last three years alone. You're looking at it right here, 15 of the Chiefs, 22 starters right now were drafted by the team. That's so freaking impressive. And the trades they do, are usually value pickups. You get a Kadarius Tony deal. Everyone, even when that happened, everyone's like, all right, whatever. Look at what they're do doing, right? And, and they got a first round talent for third round compensation in pulling for that deal. So F's and picks it is a look. It's definitely a catchy slogan and it got them a ring with the Rams. And I do give Snead and McVay all the credit in the world for making it work last year. But was that the plan? Like, or is it a cautionary tale? You can one off a Super Bowl with that strategy, but in order to build a team that can consistently contend year after year, you sort of need to know how to use those picks. Hamilton, it's an interesting conversation. You and I had it uh, on the phone in one of our many phone calls. I don't know that I would, I like what the Rams did because they do have a championship and that's whatever. And then they're celebrating and it's okay. I'm like, I would probably pick that over the Steelers doing well, I mean, they messed up their quarterback situation a little bit, I think, in the interim. But, you know, a, a team that's always good, like a, a Ravens, a blue chip stock NFL squad. I don't know. I kind of like what the Rams did, but it's a good conversation. Yeah, and I think any time you can make that trade-off for, for a ring, I think you always, you'll always take the ring. One ring is worth, you know, 10 seasons of going through some struggles, I think. Any, te any organization would take that. Um, but yeah, I think there is, I think ideally though, you want to build a team that's healthy, sustainable and contending year to year to year. And obviously that's not easy to do. We saw new England do that for a while. Obviously when you get a franchise quarterback who's young and you can build around, it helps you do that. But I think ideally that's kind of the way you want to do it. And we saw new England do it for that entire stretch of almost 20 years. And I think if, you know, we're going to see the Chiefs do that for a very long stretch right now, too, where they're going to be in the mix for a Super Bowl nearly every season with the way that they've built up their depth and some of the other pieces around Mahomes through the draft. And I think when you look at the Bengals, you mentioned the Bengals earlier, I think they're going to be an interesting case study in this because they could go one way or the other right now. You know, they still have Burrow and Chase on rookie deals and Higgins, and they're going to have to pay all those guys eventually. Do they decide, okay, we know we're going to have to pay them soon. Like, let's make a bunch of crazy trades to get some vets in and try to get that ring. Or do they start shuffling around some of those assets, maybe trade a T Higgins to get some good draft compensation okay. to, to keep rebuilding that roster. So I think we're going to see them go through this tough decision now in the next year or two. Is there a chance for the Rams here? I don't think so this season, especially with this Cooper cup news now. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned, Stafford's elbow, I think there definitely is something off there. There's just there's just nothing. This team just doesn't have anything going right now to, to make you feel confident they can turn it around. Uh, Cardinals, are you as worried as I am? There's something going on. I mean, it's not okay. Yeah, I think I, I almost wonder how different things would be if the Cardinals didn't take out the independent study clause. Because once you put it out there, does it really help you, like, PR-wise? To, to then walk it back like it's already out there we already know that you wanted to do this and it seems like it's something that Kyler needed and if it was the caveat that you needed to be able to give him that long-term deal it made a lot of sense to me um because clearly it's just it, the, the offense doesn't run the way it's supposed to run Kyler can make some phenomenal plays but you see it the ball's not getting out on time and when Colt McCoy is in there it's a marked difference not saying that Colt McCoy is better than Kyler but Cole McCoy knows how to run the offense, and Kyler right now looks like he's having issues with that. And then him and DeAndre Hopkins on the sideline, and they've got these HBO cameras in everybody's face, and it just doesn't – I don't know what's got to go, but it's almost like something's got to go. And, you know, it, and it, it, it's not a good look when Colt goes out there and they decide to look as functional as they've looked all season.